Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Arkansas Weather Blog. We are your ticket to big weather events. I hope you enjoyed your uh, the interview that I had with meteorologist Joe Bastardi with uh, weatherbell.com. I apologize. Uh, uh, something happened when we were recording it. We got we were actually talking for about an hour via Skype, and um, none of my audio was recorded. I don't know how that happens, uh, but anyway, we had a great conversation, uh, and he is an extremely talented long-range forecaster. Not perfect uh, by any stretch of the imagination, and he will be the first to admit that, but he has been on a roll and, uh, you know, look at this when I, I saw some people saying, oh, winter's over. And, um, you know, talking about a mild into January and into the beginning of February. And, there, and indeed, there may be a couple of days here and there where the temperatures do warm up. And I'm going to explain in this video how the uh, cold air deliverance into the United States is going to be directed to the north and the east of Arkansas over the next several days, but we are going to get bouts of very cold air into our neck of the woods, much worse up towards the north and the east. Uh, but the ripple effect across the country is substantial. Look at this big snowstorm that's going to happen across the middle Atlantic. We've got a ripple effect with the airline industry. We're going to see some uh, major delays across much of the United States in the airline industry. And you're going to have bouts of cold air coming in. The January thaw is over. But um, there's, I'm looking at another two rounds at least here into Arkansas, one at the end of the week and then again next week. And I'm already talking too long. I got a long video I want to talk to you about here. Uh, but, you know, he, uh, meteorologist Joe Bastardi has been on a roll with this. And, and you know, he, uh, you know, you look at the data and it supports what he's saying. And I'm going to show you that data right now with the European model. So just sit back and enjoy. The European model, we're going to look at a level called 500 millibars, almost 20,000 feet up. And we're looking at the jet stream pattern and all the embedded areas of disturbed weather. And uh, this is, again, the European model. The thing I want you to notice here, and this is the initialization of the model, the run from last night, which would have been Monday night. I'm recording this again Tuesday morning. Uh, the ridge going up over Alaska. Very important. If you want to get cold air, uh, if you want to get cold air into uh, our neck of the woods, this is an important feature. You always see that, don't you? When Alaska warms up, we cool down. So that's that ridge dislodging the cold air. And you have this feature as well, <clears throat> this vortex. <laughs> and uh, this delivers. It's like, um, it's like a, the best way to describe it, it's like the tire on your car or on your bike. Let's say the tire on a kid's bike. And there are spokes. And there's, those spokes are little pieces of energy, waves of low pressure, and each one delivers disturbed weather and, and cold punches, which comes through, and it just kind of rotates around this main vortex. It, this feature uh, will lift towards the north in the summertime, and we'll get flooded with uh, warm air and hot air across the United States as the Pacific opens up. But right now, the flow, this, this moves towards the south. The flow is counterclockwise, and you get this uh, deliverance of uh, cold air. And that's going to be the case. Now, this, again, is the initialization. Watch what happens. I'll just go out. To, uh, let's see here. Let's go out to Thursday. This is Thursday morning. You can see there's that ridge, and you see more cold air getting delivered. And that one coming in at the end of the week is going to be a very cold air mass with highs only in the 20s and 30s, and lows are going to be in the teens across, and maybe single digits across the north. And then each time one of these comes through, it warms up. And then we set the stage for yet another one, and this one's going to be a, a big one as well. Look at this. Going into, uh, well, first of all, this is this weekend. This is Saturday. We continue to see the ridge and the downstream trough. This is a very cold pattern uh, that has been much talked about for the end of the month uh, and into the beginning of January. And I just don't trust what these uh, models are saying. There it is. Look at this. See that right there? This is Sunday at uh, noon. Another big punch of cold air coming for the beginning of next week. Uh, and that's Monday. And again, there's the huge ridge and the downstream trough. So we're going into the end of January with some very cold air. Uh, just coming, I mean, it's coming straight down off the Arctic right into the uh, lower 48. So again, that's, that's just looking at the upper air pattern. Let's see what it looks like, the reflection at the surface. These black lines, those are isobars. You see, this is a, uh, let's see, this is the initialization from last night. That's an area of low pressure at the surface. Let me turn off my text messaging. 
Anyway, so uh, this is the area of low pressure here at the surface and the trailing frontal boundary here. What you see in these blobs here, the gray and the uh, green, those that's precipitation of the previous, uh, previous six hours. And watch the blue dash line. That's the infamous 540 line, a very good indicator of the rain-snow line. Uh, again, I hesitate to say it is the indicator, but it's a good indicator. And again, like I said, the black lines are the isobars, and these are measured in millibars. Uh, and when you, the higher, of course, the millibar, the colder, the, the, you get to the area of, of high pressure. And you're talking about, if you see on the top of your screen, there's a 1040 high coming down. This is, uh, again, last night. So we're looking at the cold air coming in. This is uh, Tuesday at noon. You see the area of high pressure here, a wave of low pressure out here, and uh, the counterclockwise flow around that very strong winds today and into tomorrow morning especially. But a very big snowstorm here for the middle Atlantic up into New England, so there's going to be a lot of airline delays. as that ripple effect across the remainder of the country. So even though it's dry here and warm in the west uh, with that ridge, you're going to... You're looking at major hubs that are going to have a ripple effect with the airline industry. So there's going to be quite an effect from that. And then that area of high pressure settles on top of us. I think Wednesday, like I said, well, you get these spokes of energy coming down and these waves of cold. And this is Wednesday. Look at this. Uh, high pressure is building in. You're starting to develop a flow out of the south briefly. But you look towards the north and here comes the next frontal boundary right in here. And, and, and very cold air Again, another very cold air mass that I showed you again for the end of the week, which is going to be more brutal. And this area of high pressure, look at that, 1048 millibar high. When you get get it into that range, you're talking about some very cold air. And you notice these isobars, lines of equal barometric pressure, these black lines, look how closely spaced they are. Uh, that means that there's a, a significant pressure gradient. And so a lot of wind again, and you're talking about again a period where we're not getting any rainfall here or any precipitation and the vegetation it's not, I mean, everything is dried out. We've got a moderate fire danger. We've got counties going under burn bans. We need some rainfall. And it, this flow out of the north, the Gulf of Mexico just has not opened up. You need something to dig out here towards our west to open up the Gulf of Mexico and throw some moisture back on top of us. But if that happens, then <laughs> with this type of battery, you're talking about snow and ice. But we just don't see that right now. Very cold. This is Thursday morning. Uh, the 540 lines towards the south. Look at this uh, area of high pressure here at the surface building in. Strong uh, northeasterly winds coming in. You got upslope snows here in the Rockies. Uh, it looks like Denver is going to get smacked with some snow. Uh, this is all upslope. But it's that's going to stay away from us. So don't worry about that. It's just another very cold and windy day. So the roller coaster goes up on Wednesday briefly and not all that much. And then we crash with these temperatures again on Thursday. And these are high temperatures. I think the computer models are going to be a little too warm with this until we get up to the event. I think highs are going to be in the 20s across a good bit of the state. And if it's not in the 20s, most of the day will be spent in the teens and 20s. And and here's the other thing. This is uh, Friday at midnight. You see this? Now, this is the good indicator of the rain-snow line. But you're getting cold Arctic air drilling down into Texas. So while this may be the northern edge of this may be snow, I think you may be dealing with some icing situation across portions of Texas. It stays away from us. But look at this. So this weekend, this is Friday, this is, the Arctic High is way, just drills all the way south. Very important in, the, in that video with Joe Bastardi. The Gulf of Mexico, look at this. Northerly winds in the Gulf of Mexico bringing that cold air over that to ocean water. You're, you're keeping that ocean water cold. Uh, not cold, I shouldn't say, but below average, could that delay the onset of severe weather season? you got to have, you know, for moisture return, for quality moisture return, you look for, uh, you know, ocean temperatures, sea surface temperatures to warm up, and, and that could uh, stunt the severe weather season. So anyway, you get that Arctic high moving away, and look at this. We're getting blasted with westerly winds now on the backside of that surface high, but there's more cold air coming from the north. So there's the warm-up right there. The Arctic High, remember you get that clockwise circulation. So you're getting a rapid warm-up here this weekend. So you go in for the deep freeze for a couple of days, then you come right back out of it. The roller coaster continues. There's the next punch of cold air. Look at that. That looks like on Saturday, that's going to be directed more towards the north and the east over the Great Lakes. Probably talking about some good lake effect snows. But here it's dry. Not as breezy, thankfully, but we just can't get the Gulf of Mexico to open up. Lo and behold, Sunday, let's just go late in the day, Sunday at 6 p.m., 
another wave, again, another spoke of energy around that huge vortex. This is in Michigan. Here's the surface wave and the associated frontal boundary. And look at this, another big blast of cold air according to the European model. You're talking about close to a 1040 millibar high. You're talking about upslope snows here in portions of Kansas and into uh, Colorado once again. The Gulf of Mexico is shut down. If you see these faint gray arrows, you know, everything is directed. The surface winds here are northeasterly in the Gulf of Mexico. So more cold air going that far towards the south. That's interesting. It brings in a little wave maybe. Hmm. It'd be light. That's Tuesday morning. That's showing maybe some light snow flurries. I would not, you're talking about something that's 180 hours out, so I have a tough time believing it. Gosh, I'm rambling. Eight hours. Let's just go through the temperatures here. Um, next batch of Arctic air. Thursday at noon, 32 degrees. That's Thursday at noon, 32 degrees according to the European model. 27 degrees in central Arkansas. That's at uh, 6 p.m. on Thursday. When you wake up Friday morning, lower 20s according to this, probably some wind holding temperatures up. Single digits and teens across the Ozarks. All right, next batch of cold air. It warms up this weekend. Let's go to, there's noon on Saturday. We're in the 40s across much of the state, close to 50 degrees. We're probably gonna make it into the 50s. But then next week, let's just get out to this because I'm, I'm blabbering too much. Okay, this is at uh, noon on Wednesday. I'm sorry, noon on Monday, you've got 40s near 50 across the south and temperatures in the 30s and upper 20s across the north. So you get that cold air coming back into Arkansas at 162 hours. And let's go next Thursday, uh, next Tuesday morning. You're talking about teens and 20s for lows once again. That's Tuesday. That's at 180. Here's noon on next Tuesday with high temperatures, not high temperatures, but temperatures next Tuesday at noon still below freezing across a good majority of the state. So again, just continued punches of Arctic air coming into the state. I'll keep you updated with everything you need to know. Hopefully we can get some moisture in here. I know you don't want ice. I want some snow, but we need rain. I'll keep you updated with everything you need to know right here on the Arkansas Weather Blog. We are your ticket to big weather events.